Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As a celebration of Valentine's Day, which is Wednesday, I'm about to review a romantic slapstick comedy that came out on March 27, 1987, which surprisingly enough was a huge hit at the box office. And it's simply called Blind Date by written and director Blake Edwards, who's been best known for writing and directing movies such as uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's with Audrey Hepburn and George Perpard. Also went on to do all the Pig Panther movies with Peter Sellers and so on. And he also worked on other films, including with his longtime wife, Julie Andrews, such as films like Ten, SOB, Victor and Victoria, you name it, even Dad's Life. <laughs> and then you got films like A Fine Mess, you know, this movie, uh, Skin Deep with John Ritter, Sunset, uh, you name it. Those were the films that he actually worked on. He's also been known for doing a lot of physical comedy, all the slapstick that, that you see, so it really works. And he also often uh, have movies that are composed by his longtime composer, Henry Massini. So this was considered to be the first film that Bruce Willis had ever starred in, because at the time he was doing the TV series that was very successful called Moonlighting with Silver Shepherd, you know, best known for appearing in a film called The Last Picture Show and Taxi Driver. He, she later went on to do her own sitcom in the 90s called Simply Sybil on CBS. But this was the movie that gave him his start. I mean, he went on to become a huge star later in his career when he went on to do the movie Die Hard, where he became the character, as we all know and love, John McClane. So, at the time, he was doing two movies uh, for Blake Edwards. He did this film, and he did, the following year, Sunset with James Gardner. So, this was a big stardom for his career. And he was also doing commercials for Seagram, which is an alcoholic drink. So, he went on to do very big uh, in his entire career. And still working today especially with his upcoming film by Eli Roth called simply the remake of Death Wish, which, which is a movie that uh, Charles Bronson had did, played Jack Kersey, and he went on to become very big with, with the entire series and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course you got Kim Basinger in the film. I mean this was at the time when she did a Blake Edwards film called The Man Who Loved Woman with uh, Burt Reynolds. She's also been known for playing a Bond girl in Never Say Never Again with Sean Connery in 1983. And he, she also went on to do other stuff such as Nine and a Half Weeks with Mickey Wark. That was directed by Adrian Lyne. So this was her follow-up here. And of course this was long before she went on to play Vicki Vale in Batman which was uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman's love interest, who's a reporter. So anyway, um, this is a movie about uh, a young architect who's a workaholic who wants up having his brother set him up for a blind date, which turned out to be his cousin that's uh, an attractive woman, but the only warning is that if you give her alcohol, she would go completely crazy. Yeah, so she's under the influence of alcohol, which I thought this this was pretty clever. I mean, having an attractive woman suddenly gets under the influence of alcohol, if, if you give her it, she'll just become completely insane. So she becomes the wow of the party. <laughs> so this was interesting. And the first time I saw this movie was on an airing on... KTLA Channel 5 in Los Angeles um, that was part of the TriStar Showcase uh, presentation and I had the recording that my dad taped on the same tape that had the movie Predator and 
Risky Business. So there's three good movies. All of them were hits. And they wound up being played on TV um, in 1989, yeah, during November. So it was really cool that my dad actually taped all three of these movies together on TV and I watched them. You know, despite it being edited and on television and all that, but still. <laughs> but it was great to see this movie because I've seen this movie many times after that. You know, I started renting this on home video or, my, or one of my... Um, my family started buying a VHS tape copy of the film and then I started watching this uh, in high school anytime I mean th this movie just just never gets old I mean it's just hilarious I remember laughing a lot mostly from all these scenes that's in the film I mean you got John Larroquette from Night Court uh, joining in um, <laughs> with the game which basically he becomes so jealous that he goes after Bruce Willis's character Walter, yeah, <laughs> it's just fun. Uh, I just, I just really love this. And of course, you, you got Phil Hartman in the movie. You got who's no longer with us, sadly, um, but he's been best known for doing the voice of Henry Mitchell in Dennis the Menace. And he went on to do Saturday Night Live, and he did other stuff, other movies. You know, long before his death. But, and of course he did voice acting for The Simpsons. So there you go. And the TV series and uh, uh, news radio. So, anyway. <laughs> and this is the DVD that I did show you a long time ago, back in 2013. I bought this at uh, Barnes & Noble for a lot less. It was a good deal. And at the time when I bought this, uh, they only had it on DVD. This was long before, a few years later, it finally got a Blu-ray release. So the transfer looks very good, very solid. Doesn't have all the extras, sadly, so it's all bare bones. Same goes with this release. Uh, the, only, the only feature they got was just a trailer. That's all. Which is a shame, because I think they would have had some deleted scenes and all this other stuff included. And I would have loved to see that, but sad to say, <laughs> that's not the case. And of course, this was being repackaged by uh, Image Entertainment, which is now known as RLJ Entertainment. But unfortunately, this was taken directly from the Columbia TriStar Home Entertainment uh, release from 2002. So you can definitely tell. So this is just a repackage. So no changes here. It has both uh, widescreen and full screen together on one disc so it's not um, a flipper disc it's just simply one disc to hold two of them together yeah <laughs> and it's hard to believe because um, I didn't realize this movie was pan and scan all this time so I, I guess I knew the film was shot in that aspect ratio of 2.40 uh, so it makes it look like a 70 millimeter print right there Oh, there you go. But let's get to the review. It stars Bruce Willis, Kim Basinger, John Larroquette, William Daniels from who's been best known for doing the voice of Kit in Knight Rider and went on to play Mr. Feeney in Boy Meets World. Yeah. George Cole, Mark Blum, Phil Hartman. Yep. Stephanie Farsi who went on to do um, other stuff too. In fact, she's been best known for do, the, for playing the mother in the movie Hocus Pocus. That was her. Uh, Alice uh, Herson, Stanley Jordan, Graham Stark, Joyce Van Patten, uh, Barry Silbert, uh, who's been known for doing uh, for playing the teacher in 227. And, of course, he went on to do other stuff after that. Uh, Dick Durock from Swamp Fiend. He plays the bouncer in this movie. Uh, Sap Shimano, Mono, Lashima, and Herb Tanny. It's written by Dale Lautner and it's directed by Blake Edwards. The movie begins when we meet a young architect 
who's a workaholic named Walter Davis, who's played by Bruce Willis, who allows his brother Ted, who's played by Phil Hartman, to set him up on a blind date with his wife's cousin, Nadia, who's played by Kim Basinger. Of course, Nadia is a very sexy, attractive, beautiful, but pretty shy, and definitely develops her awkwardness as it goes on because as a warning she's under the influence of alcohol so one drink or so will cause her to become completely wild in her very manner behavior so this is where she changes her personality so when Walter went inside her apartment I mean, it was all pitch black he found a match, lights it up, and that's when he begins to see um, how beautiful Nadia looks completely. Yeah, and he smiles too. So then, as the evening goes on, he went to a recording studio. You know, they're just spending time together, drinking some champagne, which that's what leads to that because apparently at first he thought it was a joke. But it turns out that this really did start to change her personality and made her completely wild. So this was basically his offer because uh, he was about to celebrate by going to an office dinner party with his boss. But things just seems to go completely wrong because by the time he went to the museum, you know, just to look at some Japanese sculptures around, that's where we see... Uh, Nadia's jealous ex-boyfriend named David, who's played by John Larroquette. So this is where he starts stalking him with her. And he just goes around getting ready to beat him up completely. You know, during that situation, just basically insulting him in several times uh, throughout the entire night as it goes on. But... It also makes it worse because once uh, he was about to go to his office dinner party try, trying to meet his boss and to celebrate they're about to have dinner with uh, a Japanese uh, geisha along with the Japanese boss around suddenly uh, Nadia just goes completely crazy she opens a bottle of champagne in front of uh, Walter's boss and it started to splash everywhere yeah, you know, even worse, you know, she even knocks uh, uh, the Japanese boss's wife, uh, her geisha girl's wig off, and then she just ran into the bathroom, and and I <laughs> know that's where there was a scene where where Nadia just went inside the the woman's restroom and just begins to to talk talk things over with uh, <laughs> with uh, the boss's wife, and and there's. Of course, he doesn't speak English, so. but then at the end, <laughs> she does begin to speak uh, the the number of, of percentage, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty hilarious. Unfortunately, all this uh, situation causes um, Walter to get fired uh, from his job, and yeah, as soon as chaos began to start after the dinner party. David suddenly arrives and he's about to go after Walter. And th this was a very funny scene too because you know, Walter suddenly takes uh, David's car. He starts up uh, the ignition and just let it go. <laughs> and then David was about to chase after Walter and Nadia while trying to chase after his car. <laughs> and then when when the David went inside his car, he wants to crashing into a local pet store. <laughs> I, 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 I'm I'm sorry. I I just can't stop laughing at that scene. And yeah, then all these animals are flying around and. <laughs> Um, another situation happened too again, but this time he crashes into 
a local paint store, just as all the animals were covered. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I just. I mean, this movie is just so hilarious. I just couldn't stop laughing. It's very hysterical. Um. So then, during that situation, uh, Walter just went to a local gas station, and then he began. And Nadia was just about to go to a restroom, but then, by the time he was getting some gas, he then began to find out that Nadia was gone. So she actually ran away into a local bar. And that's where you get to hear some wonderful music by a band called Billy Barra and the Beaters. And that's where you hear songs like Anybody Seen Her, which kind of led to that too. It almost acted like, like Walter's just trying to look for uh, Nadia. That's where you see the bouncer who's uh, played by Dick DeRock. Um, he's been known for playing Swamp Thing. It was really interesting to see him without the makeup. Uh, yeah, then, then you get to hear some other songs uh, from them. So it was really cool. It really works well. You know, Nadia was just dancing the night away yeah, with Walter until uh, David just appeared and just continues to to go after Walter. You know, they had a huge fight. Yeah, then everyone started fighting too. Then they, they escape. Then the next, um, Walter is being mugged by... Uh, by uh, two girls so they basically uh, stole his car and everything and yeah about to rob him so the cops was just uh, almost about to arrest uh, both Walter and, and Nadia but of course basically you know they decided to do a an alcoholic test you know just trying to see if if he's okay because they thought that yeah he was drinking too much apparently he was okay <laughs> so he, they, they were just doing that test you know trying to see if he can touch his he can just walk very slowly and just you know, touch her nose um, unfortunately <laughs> not uh, Nadia yeah she tries to do that and, and she just slips And of course, there's even a moment when uh, Walter was about to shoot David, it actually forced him to dance, including the moonwalk, yeah, the famous uh, dance move that Michael Jackson's been known for doing that. And, and then, then he starts to shoot him by saying, I hate this shit! <laughs> he shot him right away. Then he just continues driving around. He went to a, another party that's from uh, someone else's uh, neighborhood and and he begins to have he just completely went nuts he decided to have his life of the party but then once he wants up he wants up onto the bedroom that's when he spots David and that's what led to that that big fight that, yeah he actually pushes David straight all the way out the window and just fell as he flipped around and just and landed onto the the table full of cake. <laughs> yeah. So this was like a big nightmare for Walter, and because of that, he got arrested. Um, and then by the time um, he got uh, out of jail, which Nadia basically paid uh, Walter to get out. Ten thousand dollar in bail. So, which apparently at first he thought it was Ted that actually bailed him out. So, yeah, which I know he was already messed up already. He actually threw up inside Ted's his car, you know, because Ted picked him up. So then he had to go all the way to see Nadia to see if she's okay, and well, she was already, you know. Not in not in good shape, but they also broke the bed too. Um, once they meet, so they settled this in court. So we begin to find out that David uh, is beginning to is beginning to show up as uh, his lawyer or so. 
we also begin to learn that uh, the judge, who's played by, uh, yeah, the judge named Harold Bedford, who's played by William Daniels, turns out to be uh, the father of David. Because of all this, um, they settle it in court, and apparently uh, David was actually planning on actually marrying Nadia. So they were going to set up for a wedding that's about to happen. But Walter basically schemes by actually begin to go all the way to David's house to be able to find Nadia. So that, that way, you know, they can stop the wedding as, as it continues. And this is where we, yes, that's where you see all these uh, funny moments when he was trying to hide out. Uh, he, he slips on a golf ball inside the bedroom. Then, <laughs> then you see what, what was going on <laughs> in the house. I mean, David was there, but then, you know, he fell. Uh, I know there was also a scene with the dog that's a, uh, a Doberman named simply Rambo. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, I believe he was chasing down the the butler uh, in that one scene, because I think the butler started to moon on the dog and just goes after. Even that same dog was also going to go after the judge, too, in that one scene, so. <laughs> there you go. Um, so as as the wedding begins, you know, with um, Nadia and David, as it sets up, um, you know, she begins to stop the wedding. That is until Walter arrives. And this is where we get that moment where both Walter and Nadia had jumped into the pool together. Yeah, and of course Nadia is in her wedding dress. So there you go. Uh, that, that was a good moment there too. And then, then by the end of the film, you know, they spend their honeymoon together. So they're now married. So now they're, they're all together. Well, uh, Walter's just playing his guitar, lovely music, and then you get to see on the side there was a there was a Coke bottle. So there was like six pack of of Coca Cola in the movie. So now we know that yeah, she drinks uh, soda now instead of alcohol. So so now we know. <laughs> uh, without a doubt, this was a hilarious movie. Um, I never stop laughing every time I've seen this movie a lot. I, I would definitely watch this movie many times. It was the first movie that did introduce me to Bruce Willis, even though he was doing the TV show Moonlighting at the time. And not only that, but he went on to do uh, one of my favorite movies of the series, Die Hard. Went on to play John McClane. And there is some history behind this movie, too, that believe it or not, by the time they did this film, they were actually working on the, the Nakatomi Plaza on, on the corner. So it was already in construction by the time they filmed this movie, which was back in 86. So they were getting ready for that before they, they began to start shooting for the movie. So it's that's a good nod right there, too. So he's already becoming John McClane as we know it, but only this is a different kind of role. <laughs> This was a um, a very suave role for Bruce Willis um, after his Moonlighting uh, TV series that he was doing, because he's been known for playing this particular role. It was really interesting that he got to do uh, slapstick comedy, because this is something you never thought you would see. So I thought this was really interesting, and he definitely d developed some terrific chemistry with Kim Basinger, because I thought Kim Basinger was very sweet. You know, she's definitely a brunette in this movie. I mean, even though she's a blonde. But in this film, she was a brunette. And and I, I even though this was interesting to see Kim Basinger playing an awkward character because of the alcohol that she was given. I mean, she was very wild. But she's also very sexy, attractive. I mean, you name it. I mean, this is really something. And... And this is definitely uh, her best comic performance I've ever seen from her. I mean, it just makes you wonder that, yeah, she could do a lot of that, that physical comedy. And this is before she went on to do other stuff, too. Like, she went on to do um, another comedy called uh, My Stepmother's an Alien, which kind of resembles to her role in Nine and a Half Weeks. So, 
There you have it. John Larroquette from Night Court um, did a very good job in this movie. In fact, he was very hilarious. I mean, as the jealous ex-boyfriend of Nadia's, uh, David. So you basically see him quite different from his uh, <laughs> his um, his role in as the lawyer in the, the TV show Night Court. And it just shows the, the different personality right there. Because uh, he's been known for doing other stuff too. Uh, so it's, it's always fun to see him. And plus Phil Hartman, uh, God Rest His Soul, he was such a great comedian. I always love watching him, no matter what he does. Uh, so it's great to see him play uh, his brother in the film. And you got a lot, of, and of course William Daniels did a great job too, playing the judge, who happens to be you know, David's father in the movie, so it was really cool. You know, considering that he's been best known for doing the voice of Kit in Knight Rider. And before he went on to play Mr. Feeney in Boy Meets World, the teacher. Yeah, I mean, plus uh, there, there were other supporting actors in the film too. I, I know, um, interesting enough, uh, Walter's secretary, uh, Janine uh, Elias, has been known for doing the voice of of uh, other cartoon characters, and including the voice of of Alice in Dennis the Menace, which teamed up with Phil Hartman doing the voice of Henry Mitchell. Yeah, so Alice and Henry Mitchell right there. <laughs> and I know she did the voice of of other characters on other shows like Heathcliff and the Catholic Cats and all that. Uh, but yeah, um, but it was it was funny. I mean, there was a lot of memorable scenes in this film that I I could never forget, and I just mentioned them already. Uh, I love that. I love the physical comedy they went into it. Uh, it's definitely the best movie to ever do so, and I'm happy that that this movie turned out for its running time of 95 minutes. It it really worked. I mean, the cinematography was outstanding. It was done by the late great uh, Harry uh, Stratadine Jr. Uh, the music of course provided by Henry Massini. There was a lot of great scores that that he did for this film so it was very memorable along with a mix of other songs so it works. Um, now by the time this movie came out it did got negative reviews from critics. I'm sorry I, I don't understand. I mean, they always keep giving a bad rap to physical comedies these days. That it just never gets the attention it deserves. And I think it's a shame. I mean, even Roger Ebert gave it two stars uh, when it came out. Uh, it got a 21% on Rotten Tomatoes. It got a 5.9 on IMDb. I'm sorry. I mean, I know there are people out there who love the film, so I'm glad I'm one of them. So I'm definitely going to defend this movie and definitely recommend it for everyone who loves slapstick comedies and physical comedies or even the, the cast of Bruce Willis, uh, Kim Basinger, John Larroquette, William Daniels, and you name it because they were all good in the film. They, they looked like they had a fun time making this movie too, so it's great. And I'm just glad that I bought the DVD. Uh, I'd love to pick up the Blu-ray one of these days, too, if they go for cheaper prices. I mean, you, you won't get anything anyway, but that's okay. It'd be nice to see an HD upgrade for it. But either way, I love Blind Date. It's a fun comedy you'll never forget. <laughs> so anyway, I get Blind Date, a solid and hilarious comedy, five stars. A perfect movie for a date. As long as, you know, she's not under the influence of alcohol. But you never know. But <laughs> maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Have a happy Valentine's Day. And I'll see you later. Bye.